Part 2. The Root System Any verb in Arabic is based on a root, Arabic being a Semitic language, and the root is typically made up of three or four consonants denoting the basic meaning or the root meaning of the verb. Any addition to this root in terms of adding letters, whether through prefixes or suffixes, or even between the letters themselves, will create other verbs with different meanings. For example, kataba is verb to write, which is composed of ka, ta, and the ba. Now, if we simply add the long vowel, alif, just after the ka, we will get kataba, which means to correspond with someone or write letters to them. A typical pattern of a three-letter verb root is based on the fa and the ain and the lam letters forming fa'ala. So the fa, the ain and the lam. Let's look at the example of verb to write, kataba. The short vowels now are not expressed or not written in Arabic in terms of letters, only the long vowels, so the short letters, as you may already know, will be expressed in terms of their critics on top or below the letters. So in this case, ka, the a, will go on top of the kaf as a fatha, their critic, and the ta is the a vowel will go on top of the ta letter. So, which leaves us with basically the three um, letters, the kaf, the ta, and the ba. So, we're not uh, writing the short vowels in this template. However, if we add a long vowel now, just after the letter ka, ka taba, that will change the meaning. So now that will mean to actually correspond with someone in terms of writing letters or communicating with someone through letters. So kataba, that means to write, kataba, to correspond through letters. So we have a different meaning. We can also consider the example of wasala, to arrive, versus wasala. We added a long vowel after the wow, uh, which will change the meaning to verb to continue to do something, for example. In terms of letters that can be added to the verb root, there are 10 letters in total that could be added, whether at the beginning or in the middle of the verb or at the end. And these letters of addition will change the meaning of the basic verb root. It's important to know that when looking up an Arabic verb in a dictionary, that you always have to render the verb to the past tense, singular, plus, masculine, third, person. So, he did, literally. So, that would be, for example, over here, kataba, he wrote. So, if you come across a word in the text such as they write or she writes or she will write, you will have to render the verb to the past tense to look it up in a dictionary. So, you have to render it to kataba to look up the verb. And that's very useful to know because in the dictionary it will tell you when you look over here what prepositions can be used with the verb. It will tell you the present tense as well, yaktub over here. It will tell you the gerunds, whether it's one or more gerunds sometimes. Over here, kitaba, kitaban, uh, katban. And it will tell you the active participle, katib, and the Passive participle, maktub, as well, and it will give you some examples. 
When it comes to verbs, we can categorize them in terms of the root, whether it's triliteral, based on three letters, or quadrilateral, that is based on four letters. So in the previous example, whether it's kataba or kataba, the root is triliteral, that is, it's based on the kaf, the ta, and the ba. We're going to disregard the addition which is the long vowel in kataba because we're rendering back the verb to its root pattern. Quadrilateral roots will have four letters. The majority of common verbs that we use in our daily communication in Arabic are triliteral, which is 75.33%. Now, in terms of the number of verbs in total, both um, triliteral and quadrilateral verbs compose about 7,420 root verbs, out of which we can produce 23,655 verbs in total after adding letters to the root. Why is this important to know? Because it just gives you an idea that the root is the base and it's like a mold. And by adding to the root, you can create more and more verbs. And it depends where you're actually inserting those additions, whether it's a prefix in the middle or a suffix. However, triliteral verbs in general are more flexible and they're able to produce more verbs than the quadrilateral verbs. And we're going to focus mainly on triliteral verbs because these are the verbs that we uh, commonly use in daily life.